This segment sponsored by ICANN. ICANN is a veteran services program that provides well-trained service dogs for veterans in Indiana with service-related trauma specific to PTSD, traumatic brain injury, and military sexual trauma. And joining me to share more about their organization is Doug Samuels, ICANN board member, and Lima, an ICANN dog. Good morning. Morning. How's How are it going? You? Good. Good. Okay. We have a special guest here. We do. You, of course. And yeah. then Lima. <laughs> right. Yeah, Lima is a service dog in training with ICANN, which is Indiana Canine Assistant Network. Yes. Okay, so share with me more about this interesting organization. Sure. Uh, ICANN uh, was founded a little over 20 years ago, and what we do is we train service dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also educating the public as well, but our, obviously we're training service dogs for a variety of roles. Mm -hmm. um, we're a not-for-profit organization. Uh, so we receive no government funding. Everything is a private donation, oh, either wow. from individuals or from, from corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, we're headquartered out of Indianapolis. We also have an office here in the Fort Wayne area. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so June 27th is PTSD Awareness Day, and you all really get involved in that day and help support veterans. So share with me how you help people living with PTSD. Right. So... Um, PTSD affects a lot of our veterans in a variety of different ways. Uh, I think a lot of us automatically just think, well, it's loud noises that, mm -hmm. that bother someone, and that's not really true. I mean, there's a lot of other issues out there that these veterans have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be just going out into public and they can't function or get around. Uh, they're too worried about somebody being behind them or coming up mm -hmm. behind them, or they're worried about um, different issues other people, maybe it's even things that happen to them outside of the actual war uh, mm -hmm. that they might have been involved in. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was sexual trauma, things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, these dogs have provided an excellent service to our veterans. They can do many different things, such as the mobility assistance, maybe picking up a phone or opening a door or mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but they're also helping out with psychiatric issues as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they can alert uh, a veteran whenever they're having a, an episode. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a nightmare or a night terror and they can actually come and nudge them and wake them up. They're trained to do pressure, deep tissue pressure therapy. Mm -hmm. So they might come and lay on their legs or across their chest or something like that wow. to help calm that individual uh, down. And a lot of times the veteran may not even recognize that they're starting to feel mm -hmm. that way, but these dogs can be trained to sense that. Mm -hmm. That's so fascinating. And so I didn't realize that dogs could be so intellectual in that right. way to know how to apply certain pressures, or like you said, to nudge them if they notice their owners going through something. So what is that training like to get an animal to really understand those symptoms? We well, you know that's that's a great question. I mean, we've got our, our the primary training is done by our uh, prisoner handlers down in Indianapolis. We have three different prisons down there that they go through mm -hmm. and they're providing the majority of that training. They're brought into the system right around 16 weeks old and then they will be placed with a prisoner handler for six weeks mm -hmm. and then um, they will come out to a furlough volunteer such as myself uh, for three weeks. Mm. So I understand when dogs are getting placed with a veteran, there's so many different options. Number one, you want to make sure they're compatible. And then number two, there's different breeds. So kind of explain to me that process. Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, obviously, all the dogs that are out in the world, we all know that they all have different personalities and we all have different personalities. So uh, it's a very specific process to go through, have different veterans, you know, try some different dogs see what kind of personality works out best. Mm -hmm. um, we also, and, and they will work with our individual to train the, with the dog uh -huh. and various dogs through different scenarios, both in the office and also maybe at Lowe's or a, a local business or the parks, things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of the dogs themselves, it's a variety. I mean, everybody kind of thinks, oh, well, you know, police dogs, that's German Shepherds and maybe labs are service dogs. But we span the gamut on all types of dogs, uh, especially for our veterans. We've got everything from a Golden, Do Golden Doodle uh, Pyrenees mix. We've got uh, labs. We also have a Yorkshire Terrier as a oh. service dog in training. 
These dogs, again, <laughs> for what they can provide, whether it be just alerting, mm -hmm. uh, maybe alerting the person that they're so nervous that they need to be pulled out of the room or shown where is the nearest door. Mm -hmm. um, that's what these dogs can do. And they can do that from any size of dog, whether it be a large dog or a very small dog. Or a little one, that's so cool. And what about um, the cost? Um, mm -hmm. How much does an ICANN dog cost to a veteran? Right, uh, so the, the interesting part about this program is it's, it's very unique in that we are taking the full cost of this dog, about $25,000 after the full two years that we're doing. But then at the point where it's time for an individual to get the dog, our military veterans pay nothing for the dog. Oh, wow. So the veterans are able to get a service dog at no cost, mm -hmm. and um, they will uh, be able to keep that dog then for their entire life or until the dog's life. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's so powerful. And that's a lot of cost that you all have right. to take. And so how can people get involved, either learning more or support your organization? Right. Uh, well, there is um, I Can Dog is the website, and mm -hmm. it's I Can dog.org and if people go out to that website uh, they can find all sorts of information about the program itself mm -hmm. the individuals working there the different programs that we have and what we support but then there's also places to choose to become a volunteer mm -hmm. and also to donate um, as I said we rely fully on private donations uh, yeah. for our organization so we're always in need of volunteers we're always in need of those donations um, especially here in the Fort Wayne area, we've just gotten started in the last year or so. We're always looking for veterans or uh, for uh, volunteers, yeah. and uh, we could really use all the help we can get. And that spans anywhere from a furlough volunteer, such as myself. Mm -hmm. It might just be an ambassador, so going out into the public and talking to the public about service dogs and about ICANN. Yeah. So there's a variety of different ways that we can have uh, volunteers become involved. Okay, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Doug, for sharing about your organization. I found it really fascinating. And thank you, Lima, for what you do. She's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like more information about ICANN, we'll have their website listed below to support this organization. And I'll see you after the break. This segment sponsored by ICANN.